you interviewed the absolute best minds in the world. I've probably interviewed now, I'd say maybe over 100 doing it. Well, the self-made man himself, Nathan Chan. Nathan Chan, the CEO of Founder. Starting from absolutely nothing, he founded one of the most successful digital magazines on the planet. But this guy's name has become synonymous with success. Whatever you want to accomplish in life, there's somebody out there that has already done it. How did you start in this? Because like, did you ever think you'd be where you're at today? It was early days founder. I was living in my parents' basement. When I first started it, no one would get back to me. What was like the key shift to the turning point to get such high value guests on your show? The way that I did that was, we just want to share people's experiences, rich experiences on how they've actually done it. What sort of person do they have to become? What characteristics do they have to have in order to succeed? How do we essentially build the ultimate online business school for the world? When you have such a high value individual that you're going to interview, how do you prepare your questions? I've studied a lot of great interviewers. Follow your gut. If there is a follow up, just ask it. The key to a great conversationalist. Yes, yes, and welcome back to the official Source Move Kia on YouTube channel. Today, I've got the honor to have Nathan Chan next to me. Uh, I never thought I'd be sitting in this seat today, but it's been a massive honor and a privilege today to be at the Founder Head offices. We managed to wrap up a course today on product development. We've got another one on supply chain coming up soon, but the Founder has always been a company that's fascinated me, and I've been listening to the podcast for a really long time. I think it started in around like 2014, but I've been listening to it for at least six years. So from starting my journey, learning from you and the content that you're putting out, and then the great uh, people that you were interviewing to be then sitting in a seat and recording content together as well, such a dream and an honor for me. But uh, Nathan, thanks very much for jumping on the channel today. Man. Oh, thanks so much for having me, man. Absolute pleasure. And look, thanks for coming to Melbourne. It's just. Uh, so great to have you here. I know we connected, what, over a year ago now, and it's just great to meet in person. And thank you for you know, giving back on our platform. I'm really excited to just have you here and just uh, make magic together and have you give back to our community. Oh, thanks so much. And you know, for, for the audience, Founder, for sure, you would have come across Founder Magazine. This was the first issue, physical magazine, then transitioned into a digital magazine, the Founder Podcast, for sure, you've listened to as well and more recently Founder Courses uh, as well, and now Founder Plus membership program as well. So it's great to see like Founder constantly developing and innovating, uh, innovating in terms of uh, online education. But did I describe it correctly? Is there anything that I missed? Or how, how would you describe uh, Founder to the audience? Yes, yeah, so I would say that uh, we're an online education company uh, where we really find people that have built successful businesses, entrepreneurs, and get them to give back in many ways, however, however they, they can, um, whether that's through interviews, whether that's through books, magazines, whether that's through online courses. And now our biggest focus is really building our online educational platform, uh, which is called Founder Plus, which is uh, effectively an all access membership pass with all the frameworks, the community, and so much more, all the courses, on everything you need to know to start or grow your business. And we really wanna go on that journey with you to help you. And we go out and find all these incredible people on all sorts of things that you need to know, like sourcing and supply chain and product development. Awesome, and that's all gonna be linked down in the description below. So if you wanna find out more about that stuff, it'll definitely be available, so check it out. But you know, I'm curious to know, like, how, how did you start in this? Because like, did you ever think you'd be where you're at today? Because like, you, I think I've interviewed the absolute best minds in the world. I can't think of any other host, maybe Joe Rogan, but even him. I think even you've got um, higher level entrepreneurs that, you know, people that I really look up to, you know, your likes of Tony Robbins, Ray Dalio, Gary Vee, so much more. Like, how did you get started? And what was like the key shift or the turning point to get such high value guests on your show? Oh, thank you. Yeah, look, um I am very lucky and privileged. Um, we all are at Founder to, to, to get access to the kind of people that we, we get to. You know, I've, I've probably interviewed now, I'd say maybe over 100 billionaires, which is, which is kind of crazy. Like, I don't know the numbers, but it, it, yeah, a lot, a lot of very, very, very successful people have given back on our platform in some way, shape or form. Um, so it's kind of cool when you think about it. Like, yeah, look, I reckon Joe Rogan's probably interviewed more successful founders, Tim Ferriss would. 
I reckon Guy Roz from How I Built This as well, but there, there wouldn't be many, right? Like, like, and I don't say that from, from arrogance, I, I just know the space, right? So um, How Did Founders Start really started as a magazine. Um, it started from not me wanting to build a business at all, honestly. I, I never thought that I would be here. Um, I started, uh, you know, I started my career in IT support and I just wanted to find work that I enjoyed for whatever reason that wasn't fulfilling to me. Um, so I, I started on this journey of finding work that I loved and enjoyed. And uh, it just so happened that um, I was given you know, this, this opportunity. I couldn't get a job in marketing. I tried to get a job in marketing and I, I found this opportunity uh, to create a digital magazine. And at first, that magazine wasn't even gonna be around entrepreneurship. It just kind of happened. And what I quickly discovered from, from launching or, or, and working on that magazine was these, I, I kept hearing, like 10 years ago, I was hearing more, like everyone hears it now, but even 10 years ago, I kept hearing stories of people building successful online businesses with no experience whatsoever. Mm. And I wanted, to, I wanted to find out how. And over time, very quickly as I was developing the magazine, I was like, I need to share these stories with the world. These stories are incredible. How can I share them? And these were stories that honestly were people that you'd never heard of. And I think that's what's really interesting to, to, to compare to where the brand is now and the kind of you know, level of experience of entrepreneurs that we often interview. And still now, right? Like we interview um, entrepreneurs of varied ranges. It's not just billionaires. It's people that are actually doing something that people need to learn about. And it, it could be a micro thing, right? It doesn't have to be like they're a billionaire, right? It, 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 and that's, I think, the special part about Founder is like, we just wanna share people's experiences, rich experiences on how they've actually done it. And we want to break it down to really help people because there's so much stuff out there when it comes to building and growing a successful business. It's so hard to know what to follow and who to trust, and we want to be a trusted source to help you on your journey. Sure, but then like getting these high-level entrepreneurs as well to first of all appear on the podcast, like someone like a, a Tony Robbins, which yeah. in my mind just seems inaccessible. They must have like layers of gatekeepers and, th and stuff yeah. like that. So people like that and these 100 billionaires as well, they don't necessarily have time just to give up for an interview. So are there any sort of strategies or tactics or anything that you adopt to be like, right, this is how I can get that really high level individual to appear on the podcast or yeah. in the trainings or in the videos. Yeah, yeah, so sorry, I, I didn't really answer your question, my bad. So uh, basically, look. <laughs> I'm asking for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so look, I started Founder, started as a magazine. In When I first started it, no one would get back to me. Honestly, if you look at the first version, if you go to founder.com forward slash magazine, the first uh, version of the front cover uh, the first edition of the magazine, it actually wasn't even a successful person. It was a stock image, right? It was a stock image. So, so it wasn't easy. But what I quickly realized very, very fast was a magazine has a lot of weight when it comes to authority and brand building. And the first edition that uh, was, was where we kind of really landed a, a big well-known founder was Richard Branson. So that was uh, edition number eight. And uh, what had happened was the way that I did that was I tracked back his gatekeeper who was the head of PR for Virgin. So when it comes to finding really, I guess, time poor guests or industry leaders, industry leaders in whatever niche you're in or whatever market you're serving, there's always industry leaders or thought leaders. Um, so they're always gonna have gatekeepers. So I tracked back uh, his head of PR and even to find his head of PR, I found somebody that had actually showed me a process that had interviewed him before. Wow. And I think that's something that's really important to take away in this lesson is, from, from, from what I'm sharing is, whatever you wanna accomplish in life, there's somebody out there that has already done it. Mm. And it's your job not to find out the what, whatever problems you have in business, it's the who. And that's what we're all about at Founder. How can we find the people that have done it and get them to share on our platform? And that's what I did to get an interview with Richard Branson. And uh, you know, not only did I find the gatekeeper, but I called up on the phone. Mm. And then not only did I call up on the phone, 
But I'll never forget when I called up on the phone, I was so nervous and I was stumbling and I gave, um, her name was Daisy, I gave Daisy the pitch and she said to me, Nathan, please understand that uh, we get like 10 of these requests every single day, uh, the interview Sir Richard Branson. I don't know um, if we can make it happen, but send me an email and I'll promise I'll get back to you. And, and thankfully, they, I sent an email and I talked about the fact that his first business venture was a student magazine and he agreed and then off, off, off we went, right? So um, key takeaways, you've got to find the gatekeeper, be prepared to you know, find, find the who, not the what at times. Definitely call on the phone if you can. Be prepared to, to, to experience rejection. And then the last one is you want to interview people that are looking to be interviewed. And I think, you know, when you talk about a Gary V, I've interviewed Gary two times, both times to help support him when he's got some sort of promo or press run. Like a book launch. Correct. Same with Tony, right? The first, I've interviewed, once again, Tony two times, uh, once in person and once um, remotely. And uh, with Tony, the first time was, uh, funnily enough, through Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday used to run a book publishing agency. And Ryan Holiday was the person that uh, got me the, the interview with Tim Ferriss. Like, so, so it's interesting how you can build these networks and the who, right? Who, the who, the who, the who, the who. Um, so I think you've got to find people when they're looking for press. Same with Ray Dalio, he launched his latest book, right? So, so oftentimes it's around right person and right time as well, and it's that mutually beneficial exchange in value. I love that. And you also have to have very good and strong core values yourself because you knew a lot of people which made introductions, but they wouldn't be happy making that introduction if they didn't believe in you and your vision and what you wanted to create as well. So credit to you as well for producing such great content that people wanted to introduce you to those people. Because if you've got the keys to a Tim Ferriss, a Ray Dalio, a Tony Robbins, I'm only making that introduction if I feel like you can add value to that person. So credit to what you've built to be able to make those connections as well. And then, you know, leading on from that, it's like, interviewing these people, I always believe, and this is something I learned from Tony, the quality of your results are determined by the quality of questions that you ask. Mm -hmm. So when you have such a high value individual that you're going to interview, how do you prepare your questions for something like that? Are you like researching all their content? Or are you just going to go off the top of the head? Like how do you research because you never want to waste yeah. that opportunity? 100%. So look, obviously it's changed over time um, as the company has grown and and I think the tricky part is now, um, as a CEO, you wear many hats. And there was, a, there was a time, honestly, where I've wrestled with, do I want to be the, the face of founder? And, and I'm happy to be the leader, but do I actually want to be part of the product where I, you know, what, you know, I do all the interviews? And I think over time I won't, right? Um, and over time we'll have many different podcasts. And, and so, but, but the real focus is our, is our online education platform. So. Um, within that means that uh, as time has gone on, I, I get support. So like now Scott does all of the, the, does a lot of the research and the questions or before Scott, it was Charlie or somebody else on the team. And then, um, you know, I'd work and I'd prep myself and I'd study. So um, look, it, it, it depends what, what era that, that, that I've been in. But um, if it, you know, look, I really, with with me, the key to, to a great interviewer, and I've, I've done a lot of studying um, of exceptional interviewers, uh, is what you don't ask. The, the key to a great, uh, sorry, what you don't say. So, so, so the key to a great conversationalist is what you don't say and being genuinely curious and just listening so often you watch these interviews where people are speaking over the top of somebody. They're not actually listening. They're already thinking about the next question that they're going to ask. And then you've got to like really kind of follow your gut. And if, if something comes up, right, like you know how you're selfishly asking me, follow your gut. If there is a follow-up, just ask it because genuinely, if you want to know, probably the, the audience will want to know as well. So yeah, look, I... Um, it's something that I've practiced over time. I've studied a lot of great interviewers, you know, like an Oprah Winfrey, you know, there's so many. And then um, 
I've, I've really just, just spent a lot of time trying to hone in on that self-awareness of being genuinely curious and just listening. And yes, of course, I do a crap ton of research and I'm looking, and I, and I get help now, right? But before, before I didn't have help, I'd do a crap ton of research and I'd really be looking at other interviews people have done. And I also, I really wanna talk not about surface level things. Mm. I really wanna go deep. I wanna understand when it comes to the journey of entrepreneurship, what kind of sacrifices has that person made to get where they are today? What have they given up? Mm. Um, and I wanna know stories. Mm. I, think, I think stories are so incredibly powerful and it's what captivates somebody. And every single person that you know I'm, I'm speaking to, they've gone on a journey, mm -hmm. right? And they've got battle scars to prove it. Uh, you know that's what all Disney movies, the, the main premise of Disney movies, is based off the hero's journey. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to follow that hero's journey arc mm -hmm. when I'm doing interviews. So um, yeah, there's some of the things I think about. That's how I do my prep work. That's I agree with you. The quality of the questions, the quality, yeah, it, it, quality of the leader as well, right? Like, in, um, it is so important. Do you have like a favorite interview you've ever done or like when you, there was someone you really, really wanted and then like that confirmation email comes through to be like, yeah, it's come through, you're like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a couple. Um, look, the Scooter Braun one blew me away. That, that one was incredible for me as well. That one was so powerful. Sorry, but yeah. it's, it's because you said that, I was like, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one blew me away. Didn't expect it. He was just so raw, open, honest, giving. Mm -hmm. Some of the stories he shared were off the chain. Like he talked about how he recently became friends, good friends with Jeff Bezos, all sorts of crazy stuff. That was awesome. Um, but the one the one that comes to mind is, is Early Days Founder mm -hmm. when I interviewed Seth Godin. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, I really enjoy marketing. Marketing is really fun for me. Creating, like I'm a creator at heart, so I love to create. Um, so I love to create products uh, and I love, I'm a product and marketing guy. Um, not an operations or finance or systems, uh, that's just not me. Um, I'm okay at it, but uh, but my strength is product and marketing. Um, so uh, honestly, um, uh, in the early days founder, I was like, I need to interview Seth Godin. I know he writes back to emails. So I sent him an email and uh, it was um, at the time, it was early days founder. I was living in my parents' basement. Um, I had a falling out with my housemate. And so I was in between places. And um, so I had to live in my parents' basement for a little bit and it was early days founder. I just went full time on it. So it was probably about 18 months in to founder. And um, I pitched Seth Godin and it was like, it like, you know, 1 a.m. that I rented, wrote him an email, pitched him, and for whatever reason, I woke up at 6 a.m. and he wrote, yeah, if you can do it in 15 minutes, that'll be perfect for me. And for whatever reason, serendipitously, I don't know whether it was fate or what, I got that email, didn't have much sleep, and just yet yeah, wrote back to him, yep, done, let's do it, and jumped on, winged it, and it was absolutely incredible. And, and you know what? Those are some of the fun times that I look back on. I was like, wow, what a ride it's been. You know what I mean? I can't wait to go back and I'll listen to that episode as well. And I'm, I'm going to find that. I'm going to link it down below. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a good one. In, 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 in this uh, interview as well. But, um, you know, moving into like, you know, Founder Plus, I'm like honoured to be a part of it. And I think it's just amazing what you've built because like I look at Founder Plus and it's essentially... Um, I would say it's better than an MBA because essentially whatever education that you want to learn, whether it is in sourcing supply chain, learning how to sell on Amazon, Shopify, whether it be TikTok, whether it be Instagram, whether it's running Facebook ads, where it's like learning YouTube and it's like, even if it's mindset, copywriting, all this sort of stuff, a lot of people that I look up to are there as well. And just having access to those people is, is an incredible product offering. and. It's, it's so cool how you've sort of transitioned into that sort of entrepreneurship education into Founder Plus. But where, what's your vision for that now in terms of like, where do you see that going? How many more instructors do you want to add? Is it always going to be entrepreneurship education? And maybe a follow up on that. Is it someone who's going to take that course like, um, or be a part of that program? How can they get the best results? Because now you've got access to so much information. Like what would your advice be to someone's like, right, I want to do this Founder Plus program. I want access to these courses what sort of person do they have to become? What characteristics do they have to have in order to succeed? I'll probably ask you like five questions. Yeah, no, 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 this is good. Cause this is like, 
this is this is what you know myself and the team are really passionate about, and this is the journey that we're on. Um, so look, I have to say, you know, look, we've, we've had a great journey at Founder and, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible if I didn't have an incredible team around me. It's not just me. I'm, I'm just lucky that I'm the face of the company now, but we have an you know, incredible team that you've worked with now, yes, right? Yeah. And you've got to experience that, um, you know, they, these are the guys that are building this thing, right? I'm just kind of the visionary and the leader, right? So, um, look, how do we come to Founder Plus? So, uh, basically what happened was, uh, I started the magazine, started growing, et cetera, et cetera, and then I used Instagram to grow the magazine. And you know, we have I think 3.6, 3.7 million followers on Instagram now. You've actually taught the Instagram courses, yeah, well, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, so I taught this course on Instagram, but before I even taught the course, I wrote this blog post, True to Founder Form. I wrote this blog post in depth, asking people, uh, just sharing how we got 10,000 followers in two in two weeks. How we got 10 from zero to two. Literally, the title was from zero to 10,000 followers in two weeks, step-by-step -step guide. And that post went semi-viral. And then all these people started writing to me, asking me, do I consult? Do I consult or can you do this for me? Or do you have an agency? I was like, no, I just want to grow founder. So people were like, well, do you have a course? And so I did a cohort-based course before they were cool. Yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, I. Uh, did really well. And I was like, okay, um, well, I could just keep selling this one course or I could, uh, I saw this much bigger opportunity that what if we actually created a, like you said, a next level uh, course platform where we get the people that we're interviewing and on the front cover of our magazine to teach. And so we started to, you know, create courses uh, on all sorts of topics that our audience wanted to learn about. And we used to, we go out and find people. We've been doing this for four or five years. And then uh, last year, what I realized was that having each course on our platform being sold individually meant we were actually doing a disservice to the customer mm. and, and to our community, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, it's great to sell courses individually, right? But what I realized is if we really truly want to help people take their business to the next level or start a business or grow a business, we need to give people the opportunity to enroll in all of our courses for, for one low fee. I believe it is a low fee. Um, and so we started on this, this uh, journey of looking at how can we uh, turn how can we create an all access membership pass, access to all of our courses? Because we, we're always producing new courses anyway, and I think we've got like 25 in our platform right now. And you know, in the next year, we'll probably have 35, 40, 50, whatever. Um, so so we're, you know, we're launching new courses all the time. And so, so that's, what we, that, that's what I worked out. And, and now what I've realized is, is how do we essentially build the ultimate online business school for the world where people that are teaching have actually done it like yourself yeah. right like you're in the trenches you've sourced over 2500 products like it's it's no denying that you have experiences and valuable lessons to share with our community and so that's how founder plus came about now you ask a really great question because now we have, we're have we working towards just having one product essentially and that's where it's all gonna go. Eventually it'll just be Founder Plus. You won't be able to buy enrolling courses individually. Um, and we're gonna to continue to grow this membership and eventually eventually we'll get to launch one new course a week. That's where it's going. That's wow. We will get to launch one new course a week and eventually our, 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 our technology platform will be so Com so so powerful that when you join Founder Plus, we can have AI learning technology that will give you a customized learning journey from where you're at with your business. So we will be able to customize and that AI will learn over time. That's what we wanna to work towards, right? That basically wherever you're at on your journey and you, you are be asked a series of questions, areas where you want to learn or, or develop and it can identify and create a, your own customized pathway for you as a founder and also your team over time. 
And that is where we're going to get to. Because I agree, having eventually, when we get to one course a, a week, people are gonna be overwhelmed. They won't even know where to start, yeah. right? And it's not just that, you know, it's the community, it's the live events. Um, you know, we're doing all sorts of things to make the product just an absolute no-brainer, the most superior product in the marketplace. We're working, um, yeah, we're actually working on doing some cool stuff with, uh, with software deals and discounts. How can we give our members basically hundreds of thousands of dollars, eventually millions of dollars in savings from all these software tools that you're already going to, to, to use? And how can we go out and use the founder brand to broker next level deals that you can't even get anywhere on the market? Wow. So, so, so we're just doing everything we can to just make the product better and better and better and better. Um, so that's kind of in a roundabout way where, where we're going with Founder Plus. And, and, and the cool thing as well, you're also doing like, you know, um, course updates as well. So like I know that, you know, Nick Shackelford runs a Facebook ads course, but I think he maybe recorded that maybe a year and a half ago or something like that. And when, when we're going to record the next one in LA, uh, Nick's going to be recording his updates as well. So even yes. though you have access to the course, it's also the latest information in that as well. Well, that's, that's, that's part of the membership, right? So not only do you get access to the courses, but you know, we're constantly updating them. It's, this is cutting edge stuff, right? So you can stay on the cutting edge and that's the game, right? You know, you talk about billionaires, um, you know, Linda, Linda.com was sold to LinkedIn for I think over a billion dollars, right? Um, and when I interviewed her, I said, oh, but you know, um, when, you, when you have all these courses, they were doing a lot of stuff on, you know, things that change all the time. I was like, oh, but you have to keep updating them. And she said to me, Nathan, if you have a course platform, that's the business you're in. Yeah. You have to update your courses because that's the product. For sure. And y you know, you've sat um, in front of so many amazing guests and stuff like that and uh, your perspective must be very, very unique because you've been able to interview so many different guests and hear from them like face to face and first hand and things like that. I wonder like what's been your biggest takeaway or what's been your biggest lesson learned from any of your guests that have just said something and you've been like, wow. Yeah, look, if I'm being really truthful, Kian, I've interviewed so many people now, it's just a huge blur. <laughs> and there's no one piece of advice that just shines down on me and then I'm like, yeah. yes, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, it's something that always plagues me is this idea that it's, you keep striving for more mm -hmm. and it's never enough. And, and sometimes people often say to me, you know, like, oh, Nathan, like, you, know, you got to celebrate the wins more or like, you know, like, you, you know, and I think with that strive for greatness and progression and growth comes pain, mm -hmm. comes adversity, comes roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think to yourself, why do you do this to yourself? Mm -hmm. Like building a business is tough. Yeah. It is not easy. And you know, one thing I've taken away is from all these successful people that I've interviewed, um, it is never enough. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's because sometimes you can feel guilty, yeah. you know, like, yeah, like yeah. I don't know about you, but like sometimes you can feel guilty because you just want more and you want to do more and, yeah, yeah. and you can't help yourself. Yeah, and it's yeah. not, it's not out of greed. It's actually out of just wanting to grow mm -hmm. and evolve. And you know, like I remember I um, asked, um, and this is a common question, I ask a lot of successful founders now. I say, you know, I, I asked um, Steve Huffman, the, the co-founder of Reddit, you know, one of the most, I think it's the top 10 most visited websites in the world, like, you know, from an impact perspective, look at the impact that, that he's been able to make yeah. with, with Alexis. And um, I said, like, you know, you've created one of the top websites in the world, like, are you done now? Is, 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 is it enough now with the, with the level of impact that you make? Like it's the, it's the largest forum in the world, largest community in the world. Like, and he's like, is it ever enough? And he's like, no. Founder of Airbnb, co-founder of Airbnb, Joe Jebbio, you create one of the largest B2B marketplaces in the world. Is it ever enough? No, it's never enough. And I think for me, it's refreshing to know that because yeah. for me, um, you know, like you want to grow. You want to. I want to keep building this business. I want to. I want to create a product that helps a lot of people at scale. And I won't rest yeah, until yeah. I have. And and even when I have, like, and I've built something that, you know, is, you know, I'm proud of it now. But it'd be even more proud. And it's ten times bigger than what it is. It still won't be enough, and that's okay. And yeah. I think 
that messaging and that obsession is, and that passion and that drive, that is what is required to build anything of true worth and significance. Mm. And it takes you seven to 10 years, 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I love that you said that because like I always believe as well, like if I'm not growing, I'm suffering. And if I feel like I get anxiety if I'm not working, and I always thought there was something wrong with me, you know what I mean? But it's like to, to hear you say that and to hear like a lot of successful people that you've interviewed to say that as well. And you know what? I actually think it's a healthy obsession to have as well because there are some people which are obsessed and addicted to things which are harmful to you. And my mum always tells me as well, like, why do you work so hard? Like, why don't you focus more on like, you know, relationships? Why don't you get more sleep and stuff like that? And it's always like, I love what I do and I can't see myself doing anything else. But to, like you said, give yourself permission to allow yourself to do those things to achieve significant results. It's just reassuring to hear that uh, other people have, have gone through that as well. So thanks very much for sharing. And I think just on that, just rounding it out, I think it's so easy to compare yourself to others mm -hmm. and be like, they have it all. Mm -hmm. They have it all worked out. I envy them. Yeah. But they are still not fully fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. never enough. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's never enough and it's comforting to know that. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so easy to compare yourself to others. Mm -hmm. And something else that I'm really impressed with founder is that you always stay on top, like whether it be your podcast interviews, whether it be the courses that you put out, whether it be like your social media content. I know you have a great team behind you as well, but whenever I look at like the founder Instagram and definitely check it out, I see like a lot of other brands and people copy founder like how, how do you stay ahead be the frontier and everything you do to be like we want to be the best and we have to be cutting edge and we have to be on the top like do you have a strategy strategy for that or is that uh, innovation within your team or do you look at other people like what how, how do you stay on top in everything that you're doing because sorry there was a lot of other e-commerce magazines before you came about but you are the biggest and the best so like what what was it that you did that allows you to be on top well thanks man look um it's really kind of you. Look, it's funny you hear these perceptions because for us, we, you know, there's so many things we need to fix, right? Yeah. Internally, there's so many things we need to fix and there, there's always things that we can do better, right? And uh, I feel in many ways, you know, on the social side or the content side, we're just scratching the surface. Um, so, yeah, it's really humbling to hear that. Thank you. Uh, look, for us, you know, we try and have really high standards, um, like, uh, you know, one one of our you know we just recently reworked our values at at founder but uh, one what you know our core values but and one of one of our values is is being relentless and this this idea of I guess uh, the pursuit of excellence over perfection and you know sometimes we do ship things that probably are need more thought um, so. You know, we're, we're, we're definitely not immune to, um, you know, not having the standards, but, but you know, that, that, that's a behavior that we want to encourage at Founder. Um, so so that, I think that's really important. But I guess, yeah, I think it's standards. I think it's um, just just the pursuit of excellence over perfection. Uh, but also at the same time, look, we, we definitely draw inspiration from others, right? Like there, there are other individuals or companies that, you know, we're sharing internally. We're like, like, look at this for Inspire. How good is this? How good is this? How good is this? Um, and it helps us be better. Nice. And I'm curious to know, uh, you've done a lot of interviews now. Is there a question that no one's ever asked you before that you wish they would have asked you? Yeah, this is a good question. I used to ask this one. Um, I've already learned this one from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think um, a lot of people, look, look, no one really ever asked me about like the extreme hard times. Like, and uh, there have been, there have been a lot, you know, like uh, um, there have been times when work has been so tough that I've woke up crying. Like it is so tough, um, and that's 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 the dark side of entrepreneurship that people don't talk about enough. I love it. And what would you say has been your proudest achievement? Because I would say watching your journey from afar and now getting to know you, you've had a lot of really cool achievements. But okay. is there one that sticks out to be like that's what makes me proudest? Oh, look, I think. I think just the platform we've built thus far, 
and the lives that we've changed and the people that we're helping and just being able to facilitate somebody's growth. I think that's that's a very, very special thing to be able to provide somebody with the tools to to make a change. I think that is really cool. I think that's very special. And uh, you know, to change somebody's future from the work that we've done could like could, could it could it could potentially change the rest of their life, like their life trajectory. That's that's pretty cool to be able to do things like that. And that's whether it's starting a business, growing a business, like whatever it is. I think that that is that is pretty special. Awesome. And now, like wrapping up, like yeah, entrepreneurs that are alive, you've got a dinner table. You can have four guests, and you've got four seats to fill. There's yourself included, and you can have four people dead or alive. Who would be the four that you would want at that table to have a dinner? Ooh, it's a good one. Um, no one's ever asked me this. Uh, Elon. Gotta be. Bezos. Tupac. And Oprah Winfrey. Wow, awesome! That'll be some dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Nathan, before we wrap up, you know, uh, I would love to just acknowledge the impact that you've made on a lot of people. Uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of people have listened to uh, the podcast, the YouTube channel, have taken the courses and all that. And it's all been with a positive message, positive ambition, giving people the tools to succeed in life. And I'm sure you've impacted a lot more lives than you actually know about because of people which have consumed content that you created. So I just want to acknowledge you for that. And you also have impacted my life as well by being able to now be a part of this founder family, by being able to put out uh, my content and coursework uh, in a platform that I'd be proud of as well, you know, because I can't just sit in my studio and just press a camera and press record. You've got like a full blown team here as well. So it makes me really honored, uh, you know, to be a part uh, of your community as well. And I've got a small gift for you as well, just to acknowledge um, oh, wow. this. And because I came from Scotland, I wanted to bring you something from Scotland. Oh, and wow. this one, I think you're gonna like it. I don't know if you're into whiskey, but I brought you my favourite whiskey, which is Balvenie 12 year. Uh, oh man, but thank you so much. This is a special one, and I just want you to um, just read the label, which is on that whiskey as well. Oh wow, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Kian. Oh, my pleasure. Man, thank you. Oh, so thank, thank you, thank you so very much, much for doing brother. the interview. I really oh. appreciate it, and uh, thanks for being on the channel, and I uh, look forward to more episodes in the future. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks.